Hey folks, welcome to another Triple T Thursday. For those just joining us, that's tools, tips, and talk. We will discuss info for the knife maker. In today's episode, we're actually going to start forging the knife for our beginner series. I'm going to take you through all the steps of forging. Going to be a lot of uh, narration in this video because it's hard to talk and hammer and all that. So most of that um, stuff is going to be added after, but uh, I'll take you through all the forging. First, let's go down to the table and take a look at what we're going to be using. So here's the piece of steel that we're going to be using. This is actually a piece of um, leaf spring, and leaf spring is typically 5160. Most times it's 5160. I happen to know that this is 5160. I've used this before. I've successfully heat treated it. We'll get into steels in, a, in an upcoming video when I do a Knife Steels 101. But uh, we're going to be using 5160. Why? This is a very easy steel to heat treat. It's one of the steels that I think you could use canola oil for to heat treat if you didn't want to invest in um, expensive quench oils. They're not that expensive, but uh, if you did have canola oil, this could uh, you could harden this piece of steel. And these are pretty readily available. It's not hard to find a leaf spring. But do be cautioned, they're not all 5160. So we're going to start with this. It is mm, probably over 3 8 thick. So we're going to have a chore uh, thinning this out, and we're going to talk about that. And that's one of the reasons why I selected this piece, to show you some different techniques. So first off, you'll notice that I cut the end square. <laughs> just to make my life difficult because <laughs> it's a lot easier if you were to cut it on an angle and then you don't have to hammer in these corners but uh, a lot of times this is how you get stock so you don't want to waste a corner so sometimes uh, you do need to hammer in the corner so I'm going to show you the techniques to do that also um, the knife that we're going to be making is something like this It'll probably be a little bigger. This is what I'm calling my uh, silver tip model. But we're going to be making something like this. So let's talk about technique of how would we go about doing this before we, we get started and heat up the forge. With a small piece of steel like this, what I would typically do is hammer in the corners to set the tip and then immediately move back here, hammer in these corners, and start at the handle because this is you know it's not a huge piece of steel it's definitely enough for this knife again we're going to make this a little bigger but the reason being is the handle is pretty much a fixed length you can't shorten the handle and you can't lengthen the handle the handle has to be handle sized um, but the blade could if it was an extra inch or two longer or an inch shorter that's not going to be a problem so when you have a fixed piece of steel like this I would suggest you start at the handle do your handle first and the blade is the rest okay we're probably going to be uh, welding a piece on here for the time being a little handle on here just so we can hold this easier um, we'll talk about welding that on if you had a big piece of steel like this, this is two and a half feet long or something like this, you, this would be a different approach. Because typically, instead of having a handle, the nice thing of this, you can actually hold this in your hand. It's only going to heat up this end. Then you could just start with the front of the knife, the blade, and forge it this way until you got what you wanted, and then just cut it off. So, a, a bit of a different technique when you have a piece of steel like this that you can hold. It's also a lot easier because you don't need tongs. But, um, you know, we're not all about easy here. We're going to start the hard way. All right, let's heat up the forge and start hitting. So, here's the piece of round stock that I'm going to be welding on here. The reason I'm going to do this, just to make my life easier, um, I'm going to be using these tongs, which are really good at holding round pieces so I'm going to put a handle on here. Uh, if you don't have a welder, you don't know how to weld, then you could just stick to holding this with tongs. Um, you'll need some like some flat jaw tongs or something that can hold stock like this. Box jaw tongs that are wide enough would be ideal. I just don't have any that'll that'll hold this. Um, I'll probably end up cutting this off relatively soon. 
uh, so I can work on both ends as soon as I get this thinned down that I can hold it with the box jaws. Uh, and if you are curious, I'm going to be using a MIG welder with gas um, to do this welding. You could do this with a stick welder or whatever you happen to have, um, but I'm going to use a MIG. Bye, honey. I'm going to work. Have fun in the shop. Bye, honey. The important part when you're welding on a handle is make sure you put a lot of supports in these corners so that uh, you have a really solid handle. The last thing you want is this coming off when you're hitting your billet. So before I light it, I want to talk a bit about the forge and where to put your workpiece. So the burner that I have faces this way, hits the side of the wall, and causes a swirling action. And that's on purpose, because you really want indirect heat. Uh, some uh, forges will have the burners at the top facing straight down. You don't really want to put your workpiece right under those. You're better off putting them on the sides because too much direct flame will actually uh, just burn the carbon out of the steel. So um, I made this forge so most of my work pieces sit on the right side, because then the flame comes around and hits them and it's more indirect heat. The first thing to notice is the billet is a nice yellow heat. You want it hot, especially 5160. Notice how I'm holding it on the edge of the anvil. This lets me hit the corners and not have to worry about hitting the face of the anvil and it getting in the way. After every 10 or 15 strikes on the edge of the steel, you need to move it to the flat side because it's puckering out every time you're hitting the edge and you need to keep that flat. If you don't take care of this, you'll get what's called a cold shut, which is the steel folding over on itself. For the rest of the video, I'm going to show the forging sped up and continue to talk about what I'm doing. Here I'm continuing to knock in the corners. I'm hitting on a 45 degree angle here to make sure I don't get a fish mouth. If you just hammer straight down, you'll tend to bow in the steel at the end. 5160 likes to be forged pretty hot, so when it gets red or dull red, back in the forge. Wanted to take a moment and talk about our sponsor, Maritime Knife Supply. If you need anything knife related, steel, handle material, G10, pins, hardness testers, files, you name it, they've got it at Maritime Knife Supply. It's where I get all my gear. I think you should too. You guys probably don't see it, but I'm actually bracing the back of the tongs against my leg. This gives me some back support, especially when I'm doing those 45 degree hits to make sure that it gives me as much power into each strike as it can get. Now I've got the corners knocked in and I don't have to worry about a fish mouth forming at the end of the knife. Now I'm just adding a little taper to the front of the blade to get ready to thin this thing out. So now it's time to thin this stock out. This is where having an actual anvil comes in handy. There's usually one side of your anvil that has a gentle curve instead of a sharp edge. That's what I'm using here. I'm hitting the top with the peen of the hammer and the bottom is acting like another peen. So it's squishing it from both sides, pinching it and lengthening it. Now moving over to the face of the anvil, you just get a little more control there and you can prevent any really deep gouges. Now I'm putting a little more shape into the blade. I'm getting ready to cut off the handle here pretty soon. Stay tuned to the end and find out how you can win this knife that I'm forging.
It's important to occasionally use a wire brush and take the scale off your workpiece or it's just going to keep building up scale. You can see now that most of my effort is being spent just thinning out this 3 8 thick stock. Now I'm starting to put some shape into the handle. What I'm doing now is using the peen of the hammer to put that well where your, the front of your hand goes right before the blade starts. One thing I wanted to mention, in this beginner forging session, we're just going to be doing the profile. We're going to be forging the knife to shape. We're not really going to be forging in bevels or maintaining a constant thickness. We'll do all of that on the grinder. Now I've cut our little handle off with the angle grinder and I'm stretching out the handle of the knife. Now it's really going to start to look like a knife pretty soon. Now I'm moving to shape the back of the handle a little bit. I like my handles to have a slope in the back, like this picture. Here you're seeing me compare the handle to a ruler. I like to do this from time to time to make sure I get the right dimensions. Here I'm comparing the handle to my pattern just to make sure I'm on track. Now I'm spending a couple of heats just to make sure the edge and spine are all nice and flat and straight. Now back to refining the tip and notice how I'm using the very edge of the anvil and this gives me access to the very tip of the knife. I needed to straighten out the spine so this is a fun little technique. Instead of hitting the knife, I'm hitting the knife on the anvil. I spend the remainder of this heat just flattening it out and making sure my knife is nice and flat. That's going to complete our forging on this knife. Like I said, we're just forging the profile, which is what I recommend folks to do when they're first starting out. Now that we're done all the forging, we've actually introduced a whole bunch of stress into this knife by hammering on it. So now what we're going to do is called normalizing. We're going to do that in the forge by heating it up to about 1600 degrees and then letting it cool to black. Here's about the right temp for our normalization. Now I'm going to take it out, hang it in some vice grips and let it cool. Okay, this blade is cool to the touch. Um, I put it in tongs here because I'm going to put it back in the forge. So it's fully normalized. We've let the steel relax. Now I want to anneal it. So the forge is just turned off. You can see it's still hot inside. So I'm going to place the blade in here. Okay, so the ambient temperature of the forge is not going to be above 1600 degrees. It's probably around 1300 or something like that. Maybe 1400. Um, definitely it's below 1450. The blade's not going to get that hot. I want it ideally around 1350, 1380 degrees. So I put it in the forge and now I'm just going to let it cool down with the forge and that's going to anneal the blade. So here's the knife fully forged. 
Uh, looks pretty good. I'm happy with the profile. Handle fits really nicely. Uh, we've got some, uh, some work to do still, of course, because it's pretty thick, so we're going to have some work to do on the grinder. But um, overall, I'm pretty happy with the way it came out. If you want a chance to win this knife when it's fully completed, all you have to do is join my Patreon. There's a link down in the video description uh, to go and join my Patreon. You'll get lots of cool stuff in there, like uh, community chat, access to uh, consultations on knife builds, and of course, free drawings. And this will be one of them. So in next week's episode, we'll start grinding, we'll talk about pinholes, and take this to the next step. Thanks, folks. We'll see you on the next one.